Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for this week's Reef Health Update. We're continuing to work with our partners to understand conditions across the Great Barrier Reef. As I said last week, we're continuing with our broad scale aerial surveys and those surveys have now covered more than 300 reefs spanning two thirds of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park from up north by the, around Cape Melville, which is just north of Cooktown, all the way down to the southern extent of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park offshore from Bundaberg. The aerial surveys are showing us that we now have widespread, often called mass coral bleaching across the surveyed reefs. And while the aerial surveys are showing that the coral bleaching is extensive in the shallow water areas, we will need in-water surveys to confirm the severity of the coral bleaching and also what the depth range is. The results of the aerial survey and the patterns of coral bleaching that we're seeing are consistent with the patterns of heat stress that have been building across the Great Barrier Reef over the summer months. It's important to remember that heat stress is not even across the Great Barrier Reef over this period of time, and that we actually have got variability both in that heat stress pattern and in the coral bleaching that's been observed from the air. This continues to be an unfolding event and follows on from, that follows on from similar reports of coral bleaching on reefs around the world that have come about as a result of elevated sea surface temperatures, primarily driven by climate change, but amplified by the effects of the current El Nino event. It's critical for us to understand what's going on across the reef at points in time like this, so that we can report upon the condition of the reef, but also so that we can target our management actions to help support the reef's recovery. It's important to remember that whilst corals that are bleached are clearly stressed, it doesn't always mean that there will be mortality. If conditions cool quickly enough, then even bleached corals can, um, can recover. It's also important to remember that the Great Barrier Reef has seen many periods of impacts and actually recovery. The most recent recovery following major events like coral bleaching and cyclones and crown of thorns starfish outbreaks, underlying its inherent resilience, its ability to tolerate and recover from events. Actions to protect the reef are more important than ever when it's under stress. You can help us by making sure you follow the marine park rules, avoiding anchoring on corals when you're out in the marine park, and potentially voluntarily reducing your catch of fish because all species are important in helping the reef to recover. We can all do our bit also to tackle the underlying cause, which is climate change, by reducing our carbon footprint. It's the combination of local and global actions that will best enable the reef to tolerate and recover from events such as these. And overall, we continue our work to make sure that we secure the future of the Great Barrier Reef. Our management remains focused upon protecting the reef through long term actions. These include measures to control crown of thorn starfish, making sure that we have effective compliance with the marine park zoning rules and also measures to improve water quality and also working with key partners such as traditional owners within the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park to look after their sea country. We'd also like to acknowledge the challenges that this news brings to all of us at the Marine Park Authority and all of those that care about the Great Barrier Reef, including the communities up and down the Great Barrier Reef coast and the businesses that rely upon it. Our commitment remains to work with you to secure the best possible future for the Great Barrier Reef. While it's clearly under pressure, the Great Barrier Reef remains a vast, beautiful and biodiverse ecosystem, and we all have a role in protecting it for its long term future. I'd like to thank you for joining me this week, and I'll continue to provide information upon what's going on on the Great Barrier Reef in the coming weeks.